Gotta love sports. Welcome to the Shot Clock, where we're talking sports, entertainment, and lifestyle. I'm your host, Mina Say What, and we're 100% digital, 100% live, and 100% real. Let's count them down. Yes, yes. Welcome to the Shot Clock. This is our digital sports show. I'm your host, Mina Say What. Happy International Women's Day. Shouts to all the ladies watching and the guys too, because we like y'all too. But look, this is our digital sports show. This is where we talk sports, Philly sports. We are broadcasting live right now on YouTube. I just got the Twitter, uh, the Twitch update, Twitter, and of course, our Facebook the whole premise of the show, we're on a shot clock. Here we go, 20 minutes on the clock. Let's bring in my brother, Fox 29's own sportscaster and podcaster, Sean Bell. What up, what up? How what's, you feeling? What's up, Sean? What's you know, I'm feeling good, man. It was yeah, there's a lot to get to today. There's a lot to get to. Listen, it was intense last night between the All-Star Game and then Meghan Markle and Prince mm. Harry and Oprah. Mm. We on one today. Let's get right to it. Uh, we are going to be honoring uh, an amazing woman later on in the show. We've been talking about it. Natasha Cloud. She is a WNBA champion. Uh, it's Women's History Month still. So we're definitely going to talk to her uh, later on in the show around 12.08. Let's get into the playbook. Big story in Philly. Our guys, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, out of the 2021 All-Star Game because of health and safety protocols. Uh, apparently, they came in contact with a barber who tested positive for the coronavirus. This is what the NBA had to say early yesterday. Now, I just want to point out that they have both tested negative, but this was just very disappointed. It's a disappointing. For me, it kind of made me a little bit less excited about the All-Star Game, but what were your initial thoughts on this, Sean? You got to pay the barbers the bag. That, that's what I thought because... These are sanctioned barbers, so it's not like it's not like they went somewhere else and did something that they shouldn't do. But the barbers have to make money, so they're also cutting other people's hairs. So pay these. It's the same thing happened to the Kansas City Chiefs right before mm -hmm. the Super Bowl. How about you say, hey, hey, would you be willing to sign a contract and we will double your back to wow. only cut six or haircuts? OK, that's it. You go home, you cut six or haircuts, and you can avoid stuff like this. You know what, though? That's that's a hard thing to ask because, you know, people are very particular about their haircuts. They're trying to get fresh before the game. Everybody might not like the same barber. <laughs> so it's going to cool. get into a situation where you're going to have to put multiple barbers on payroll. Like, is this where we are in the world? Yes. Hey, <laughs> I grabbed three barbers. Hey, you getting a, the bag bag, okay? You getting <laughs> all the riches. And just, just sit down because what happens if this happens? right before a playoff game right. because of the barber even though they tested negative now they can't play in game one or something so right pay the barbers but as far as the all-star game listen doc rivers is happy he's like yo no risk of injury okay. right <laughs> right but yet you don't have the virus so you're all good i'm cool with it so i know that's what doc and the organization was thinking right let's uh look at what joel had to say you know joel be trolling all day here he go look at all those fresh uh shape ups and i have to be the one <laughs> This is right before he asked for the tea. He was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I will say, um, I was a little disappointed because I get where you're coming from in terms of injury and keeping those guys safe. But you know, we're we're advocating for Joel to be the MVP this year and for Ben to be uh defensive player of the year, right? This was a great opportunity for them to showcase their skills in front of not only the national audience, but against every all you know, the who's who of basketball. So that kind of was disappointing to me because I felt like this could have been another campaign. You no, know, of course. I, I didn't want this. Like, I'm just saying that's what Doc Rivers and the organization thinks. I wanted Joel to be to sort of sh highlight what he does and, and be fun and, and joke on the court and still hit threes right. and do what he does. But again, I'm not that mad because it, it, it's an all star game. Like, if you didn't already know what those guys can do, then you ain't a hooper. You don't really mm -hmm. pay attention to what's going on. Right, right. Well, we got to be like Bobby Schmurter, right? We got to be everywhere and wear that mask. You've seen him everywhere, all over Atlanta with that mask. There he is with Meek, mask on all the time. Now, speaking of all over Atlanta, the NBA has sent hundreds of cease and desist letters to party promoters before the All-Star game. We knew this was going to happen. According to the New York Times, the league issued about 200, 200 
cease and desist letters to promoters ahead of the game. And obviously this is them trying to not only stop the parties, but also stop them from using the all-star game logo and they're promoting. So it doesn't look like an NBA sanctioned event, but what did y'all think was going to happen when y'all decided to have the all-star game down in Atlanta where there people already are not following rules and you put the players in this environment of course they're going to be parties. I literally received an itinerary, Sean, on Thursday. An itinerary of parties and events. And every rapper, every artist, the who's who was hosting a party that night. Of course, man. Like, it, again, you saw me. You knew Quavo was going to do something. You knew Gucci was going to have something. You knew Sweetie was going to be in the house. Like, you already knew the type of parties. We don't need your little NBA logo and endorsement. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not in Atlanta. We already throwing these parties, like you said. So, yeah, like, it's it's COVID central over there. People, yo, I saw on Twitter, people, women and stuff like that were sleeping in U-Hauls. Yeah. Like, hotels are full, so we're going to get dressed in, in our in our – and our gear in Hugh Halls and come out and party. Like, is it that serious? Like, right. y'all really don't care about COVID, do you? Amir said he, you couldn't pay him the party down there. Of course, if you comment, we're watching your comments as well. You can always do that, okay? My whole thing about this, it's a shame that the creators of the bubble would literally send their players into this kind of environment. We're all sharing the same, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, airplanes and we're going to the air same airports and like look at this party with meek mill look at this what you gonna do man yeah <laughs> Literally, there's COVID all over my screen. I feel like I got it after watching that. That's the kind of environment that the players were in. Just not safe. Yeah, what are you going to do? Like, you can't prevent it. This is Atlanta. This is Florida. This is Texas. You know what I mean? No, notice the trend. You know what right. I mean? I stay up north. I'm right. comfortable right here in Philly. I'm good. Right. Well, the positive thing was that the HBO, HBCUs got a lot of love yesterday. They were featured throughout the show. They literally uh, had a whole like separate court dedicated. It was painted. It was nice what they did. And they raised a lot of money, the All-Star Game, for HBCUs. Now, Team LeBron defeated Team Durant 170 to 150. Uh, shout out to Giannis. He was the MVP of the All-Star Game. But the good thing about this is that uh, Team LeBron represented the Thurgood Marshall Fund and raised $1.2 uh, $1 million for the Thurgood Marshall Fund. And then Team Durant, who lost, actually raised $500,000 for the United Negro Fund. Now, Joel, prior to us finding out that he wasn't playing, he promised to make a $100,000 donation to combat homelessness here in Philadelphia. He donated to Youth Services, Project Home, uh, the Sunday Breakfast Mission, and this is what that money is getting. 15,000 meals for the homeless, 4,000 uh, clothing items for the homeless and uh, for teens and adults. 1,000 people are going to be vaccinated. You know, 30-plus uh, Families, formerly homeless families, are going to have education, health care, employment services. And the Sixers decided to match that. That's the silver lining of all this, right, Sean? Yeah, salute to Joel and B, man. Like, even though he's, he didn't play, they're still going to get that money doing great things in the community. And then also, listen, just because you don't hear about it doesn't mean it's not happening. I know a lot of people need to see it on social media, need to see what the players are doing. But I'm sure Joel Embiid has done a whole lot of things in the community when it comes to donating money that you haven't heard about. So right. a lot of players are doing these type of things. And we got to salute to a lot of great individuals who do this, whether you hear about it or you don't. Don't assume they're not. Like, there's a lot of great players in this league. And Joel Embiid continues to do great things, whether you hear about it or not. So salute to him and the entire team for backing them up. Right. And I like the concept that the NBA had this year. Like, let's support HBCUs. Let's highlight players and coaches who attended HBCUs. And let's actually donate to help. It's particularly the scholarship funds, you know, to attend these schools. So yeah, one of the few leagues that listen to their players. You know right. what I mean? Like, we'll, we'll fully listen to where y'all want to donate this money and we'll back you up. One of the few leagues, maybe two or three leagues in this, in the world who actually do that. Yeah. So that's the shot clock. Let's get to a word from one of our sponsors. We've seen how far this game can go. So we take it and run. Making moves like nobody. For everybody. We don't move within the lines. We move beyond them. Hennessy. 
the spirit of the NBA. Welcome back to the Shot Clock. I'm your host, Mina Say What. Sean Bell joining me. It is Women's History Month. And today we are honoring WNBA champion Natasha Cloud. Natasha is from Broom Mall, Pennsylvania, right outside of Philly. Graduated from St. Joe's University in 2015 with a degree in communication studies. As a member of the women's basketball team, Natasha earned numerous awards. She was even honored as a member of uh, the SJU's Director's Honor Roll. Now, Natasha was drafted drafted 15th overall in the 2015 WNBA Draft by the Washington Mystics. In 2019, she led the Mystics to their first WNBA championship and was voted the 2019 WNBA All-Defensive Second Team but Natasha opted out of the season in 2020 to fight for social justice. When she's not active on the court, she is a social justice activist. In the aftermath of George Floyd's killing, Natasha attended several protests and published an essay in the Players' Tribune calling out athletes who don't speak out against police brutality, saying, your silence is a knee on my neck. Natasha is highlighted on the Forbes 30 Under 30 in sports, for her commitment to social justice reform in 2020, Natasha signed a shoe deal with Converse, becoming the company's first female athlete to join their team. She was named Outsports Female Hero of the Year in 2020. Here she is talking about her journey. It's been exhausting to have to constantly be vulnerable with people and to try to explain my feelings as a black woman in America and there's nothing that infuriates me more than someone not listening. Well, we are here to listen and we are welcoming Natasha Cloud, WNBA champion. She's out here saving the world. <laughs> yeah. You like the intro? <laughs> I love it. I appreciate it Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Natasha, so as I just mentioned, you literally won your first NBA championship, WNBA championship in 2019, right? The peak of your career. You've been playing basketball since you're a kid. You won a championship. This is what we live for, right? <laughs> and then literally the next year, you're protesting the season. You know, you're upset about the social injustice and police brutality. What are some of the sacrifices that you've made because of your decision? Man, it, it was really the hardest decision I've ever had to make thus far in my career. And like you said, <clears throat> coming off of 2019, when we won a championship, I had my personal best year. I'm the point guard. I'm one of the leaders on our team. Uh, so to, to sit out, forego my salary, am I able to do this? Because I'm the provider of my family and it's no secret. We don't make with our, what our NBA counterparts make. So is... Uh, Am I able to take this pay cut for my family as well? And then at the end of the day, to be impactful is to be present. And um, I understood the momentum that was behind the movement. And I wanted to take advantage of this time when there were so many eyes on, okay, what are athletes doing? What are celebrities doing? Well, I want to be in the community. I want to take myself off this pedestal that we can sometimes be put on as professional athletes. And I want to be in these marches. I want to be at these, I want to be at these hard discussions. And uh, for me, it was I couldn't. I didn't feel I could be a champion on the court and be a champion in my community. I wanted to be just two feet in with my community. Mm. Natasha, now like the WNBA and the ladies in the WNBA, particularly the black women, are always ahead of the curve and always the first one when it comes to leagues to take a step to to fight for a cause. And I want you to sort of, if you can, take me inside the conversations that are had with you and your teammates. The the I guess difficulty it is the difficulty there is or the conversations that are go back and forth and make it intense what are the conversations like before you guys stand out together man it's uh it's really cool because like you said the w has always been at the forefront of every social issue whether we get you know the, the acknowledgments or not um we understand our voices we understand the power of our platforms um and it's kind of been the blueprint since i came into the league you just have all these you know, badass women surrounding you that are strong, intelligent, you know, passionate about what they care about. And so you kind of fall into that blueprint. Um, so the conversations are always the hard dialogues that need to be had. And yes, we're a league of 80% of black women, but that other 20% 
uh, we always find a, a way to come to a common ground and come to a common understanding of what we want to represent as a league. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud to be one of 144. I'm proud to be a mystic. I'm proud to, you know, be in a league that we have these conversations and we stand up and we speak out and we be a voice for the voiceless. You know, when you're doing something like this, support is crucial. You know, um, talk about some of the people that have supported you, even the companies. I mean, I saw Converse who you're signed to paid your salary. I mean, what is the responsibility of your your community, you know, your tribe to show up for you? Man, it, it was everything. Uh, I was truly, truly supported over this summer and every facet, and starting with Converse. I mean, you want boohoo tears? Boohoo tears <laughs> called me two weeks after I opted out and they said, you know what, we believe in you hear you, we see you, we value you, we embrace you, and we want to make sure that you and your family are okay during these times. Like, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And that alone, you don't see other companies and other brands stepping up for, you know, their players like that. And I technically broke my contract. Like, I make I make it very clear to say that every time because in my contract it says that, you know, I have to play a season. Um, and so technically breaking my contract for them to support me and then, you know, utilize us you're in the driver's seat how do you where, what do you want to do how do you want to do it where can we get money and resources and uh they actually did it here in Philadelphia. Which i was really happy to be able to give back to where i'm from um and you know other people like chris paul like you were talking about the all-star game last night and sent it around hbcus like that's chris paul um and his social change fund with uh Mello and d wade and uh, Chris and that fund have been huge for me. I mean, anytime I need anything, I can reach out to Chris. He's going to get back to me right away and uh, kind of just been a mentor through this process. And then, you know, I've, I've teamed up with uh, different things like uh, Players Tribune. I've teamed up with the Players Coalition with Malcolm Jenkins, who was a longtime Eagle. I saw that. Yeah. So like I'm the head of their WNBA kind of front now. So I've been I've been blessed with a lot of good people and a lot of good black men that have stepped up for a black queen bring her seat to the table to push it in for her and to be like, listen, you're here, utilize your voice, your voice is powerful and use our platforms to amplify it even more. So I've been extremely, extremely blessed. Mm. Now, like you said, like y'all get love from the real hoopers, right? Like but, Kobe, Chris Paul, like they show the proper love, but I always, I always laugh at idiots online who try to say, well, I could be her, play <laughs> me. Like, I'm like, dude, like, I play with you. You're trash. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's a professional, right? So what I like, I always like to hear the clapbacks. I'm a I'm a I'm a petty clapback type of person. So what what do you sort of say to these people who just are out here spitting this nonsense, these men, these misogynistic, et cetera, men? Man, I told them to show up. What you mean? <laughs> I, I grew up playing, and you know basketball is different. So even though I grew up outside of the city, I played the basketball. So it's a whole different beat. So if you want and talk shit, bring it. Like, I ain't got a problem walking down the street and going to mm -hmm. right down my house. Like, it is no issue. But, um, you know, you know, the mystics and people around me are like, what, girl, we're back now. <laughs> I calm down. But um, for me, it's just, you know, everyone's so, you know, big and bad behind my keyboard. But when it comes to face, y'all not going to say that to my face. And at the end of the day, we know who the real hoopers are. And like you said, we have our NBA counterparts. We have people that just love the game of basketball, that understand our value and what we bring. And what we bring from, you know, a social standpoint, too, of our voices and our power and our passions. And um, so, you know, it, it's cool. L little John, Kevin, and all <laughs> that got cut from the high school team, talk trash. But at the end of the day, I'm providing for my family by this game. So I'm blessed in a lot of ways. Uh, you can't knock me off my horse, man. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Amir said, check the ball or shut up. That's what he said. <laughs> Tell them, okay? <laughs> uh, Natasha, we're running out of time. It's so crazy how much time flies. But um, you mentioned Chris Paul. I wanted to talk about something that I saw. So there's a documentary on HBO uh, that's coming at the end of March called The Day Sports Stood Still. So Chris Paul is actually executive producing it and you're involved. Can you talk about that day? Because when COVID happened, I was aware of it, but I think it really hit me when sports stopped. Mm -hmm. Like when the NBA stopped playing, I was like, wait, what? It was like <laughs> where when, you know, the world was already stopped and then sports stopped. And it was like, wow, we're really like, this is real. 
And I think that was the moment that everyone began to realize, like, no, this pandemic is for real because these big, huge business entities, the NBA that makes billions of dollars, they're stopping. Like, there has to be a real reason. So uh, it was really hard uh, for us too, you know, as athletes, you know, this is how we provide for our family. This is our means of an escape in a lot of ways too. Like, this is traumatic being Black in America. And so the basketball court or the field is always, always our oasis away from things. So um, it was really cool, that process of uh, teaming up with Chris Paul. I mean, I grew up loving Chris Paul. I mean, as a point guard, he is like it, you know, facilitator, sets up his teammates, but then can score at will. And so I always grew up watching them to have a conversation with him and him call me like, listen, queen, I want to bring you on. I want to start mentoring you. Like I saw your interview on CNN the other night and I thought it was like phenomenal. Uh, you're powerful and we just want to amplify your voice. I was like, <laughs> and th is this the right number <laughs> are you talking about me? um so his guidance has been huge just to kind of sit and and we're, just be more than an athlete like we talk about um especially our nba counterparts how they have their hands and kind of everything from chris paul to lebron james they've changed the game of being more than an athlete and um, you know, we don't always get that, the, those opportunities on the women's side. So for a king to bring us in and be like, listen, you, I want whatever involvement that you want to have. If you want to be in every single meeting, be in every single meeting. If you want to show up occasionally, do it. I was like, listen, I'm here. <laughs> I say whatever you say, you know. Oh, Natasha, thank you so let me, much. Let me say this real quick before, before you leave. The WNBA, for some reason, doesn't have a team in Philadelphia. What we got to do to make that happen? Let, let Renee Montgomery help get that individual out of Atlanta. Yep. Owns the team now. Tasha, what we got to do? I'm trying to be on board. Hey, it, it's not necessarily a secret. That's what I was told. Uh, we are trying to get a Philly team. It has been in the works for a year and a half. Um, and uh, so put a little pressure on, on not only the city, but on the W, too, to, to make it uh, you know, our, our thing for us to expand, for us to progress, it's our league needs to expand. We have to have more than 144 jobs because there's a, more than 144 of the best players in the world. OK, um, so listen, it's in the works. I'm trying my damnedest to bring a team back to Philly um, because that's my ultimate dream. You know, there, there's nothing more than you want uh, than your home team to have a WNBA. I ain't got owner money, but I could throw right. something in there if y'all, you know what I mean? Hire me. <laughs> I'm going to put you in contact with the right people. Because they've been uh, they've been uh, Listen, hire me in the back, you know, in the front office or in the back <laughs> office or wherever office you want to put me. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Natasha. We appreciate the time. Thank you guys so much for having me and stay safe out here. You, uh, too. you too. Thank you. Bye, babe. We are headed into overtime. Let's get into a word from one of our sponsors. Stop overpaying for wireless. Switch to Boost Mobile and watch your bill drop. Plan starting at $10 a month that match your data needs. Think your phone company can get down like that? Get started for as low as $10 a month. All on America's largest 5G network for less. Boost Mobile. All right, you're checking out the shot clock. You know, we be trying to budget everything. Hey, overtime. It's all right. It's and it just it's hard when we have guests, especially she's so good. Thank Overtime. you. That's all right. Right. And thank you, Natasha Cloud, for joining us for Women's History Month. Real quickly, uh, the Sixers got a light schedule. Obviously, well, we were supposed to be coming back from the All-Star game, but um, you know, um, Ben and Joel have tested negative. However, uh, we're we have to wait and see if they're gonna be able to play on Thursday. Uh, what are we hearing about these games, Sean? Listen, I have no predictions because some people have said three games. So it also depends on who else they've been in contact with. So they haven't said exactly how much time we'll miss. Doc Rivers was hopeful that they'll be back for Thursday's game, but there's nothing concrete. So I'm not even giving you predictions with this one because I don't know if those two are playing. 
All right, well, these are our games. Sunday is the first game back at the Wells Fargo Center. I saw that the uh, the Flyers let uh, fans back into the Wells Fargo Center on uh, Sunday, yesterday. It was very light. 3,100 tickets are out right now for that Sunday game, okay? I will be home <laughs> because I will, I will wait for them to work that out. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. It's the Shot Clock every Monday at 12 o'clock. Once again, thank you to our honoree, Natasha Cloud, WNBA champion. And next week, we got another one lined up. <laughs> we got another one lined up. Thank you for everybody watching on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and uh, Facebook. And we will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Sean, my brother, my guy. <laughs> Love y'all, man. It's the shot clock. I mean to say what? Thanks for watching The Shot Clock. I'm your host, Mina Say What, and you got something you want to talk about next week? You can always hit me up on social media at Mina Say What. And make sure you join us 12 o'clock next Monday on r Philly's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you then.